Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do episode one of learning to teach and we'll discuss a concept that I'm learning in biochemistry at the moment, which is enzyme inhibitors. And the goal of this video is to give you a very basic understanding of how enzyme inhibitors work. So in the human body, we have all of these molecules that are constantly undergoing chemical reaction. One of these molecules you'll be familiar with is a protein. So an enzyme is essentially just a type of protein that increases the rate of a chemical reaction, makes it go faster. The bare bones of what an enzymatic reaction looks like, you have the enzyme, which we typically draw as this little Pac-Man looking character with its mouth open. You have a substrate, which is just a component of the reaction that is converted into a product. And so those two things bind together. The enzyme binds the substrate, there's a chemical reaction that occurs, and the substrate is converted into a product. The enzyme then releases the product, and it goes off and does whatever job it's supposed to do. To reiterate that, you have the enzyme that binds the substrate, there's a chemical reaction that occurs, the substrate's converted into a product, and then it leaves to go do its job. Now there's one more step that we need to talk about, and it's what we might call a halfway point. So you have the enzyme, the substrate, when those two things bind together, there's a little bit of a chemical reaction that occurs where the substrate changes. It's not quite the substrate anymore, but it's not quite the product yet either. And this is what we call the transition state. The only thing that you really need to know about the transition state at this point is that the enzyme has the highest affinity for the transition state. And what I mean by affinity is that it wants to grab onto that the most. So out of the substrate, the transition state, and the product, the enzyme wants to grab on to the transition state the most. So if you had an enzyme that was not bound to anything and you had a bunch of substrates, transition states, and products lying around, it would grab on to the transition state because that's what it wants to grab onto the most. Moving on to the concept of enzyme inhibition. And this is exactly what it sounds like. You're altering the enzyme in some way so that it cannot do its job. So you might be asking yourself, but Josh, why do we want to do this? And one example that we talked about in class that we're going to talk about right now is HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. So HIV has what we call an HIV-1 protease, and that is an enzyme. And so what happens here is HIV, the virus itself creates this long protein, what we call a polyprotein, but it's just this great big long protein. And what this HIV-1 protease, the enzyme does, is it comes through and it cuts that large long protein into different sections, basically into smaller active viral proteins that then go off and create mayhem in the body. So one way to combat HIV would be to inhibit this protease such that it can't cut the larger protein into those smaller active proteins, creating mayhem in the body. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we can apply the knowledge that we just learned about enzymes to this specific example. So the HIV-1 protease, that's the enzyme, our little Pac-Man character, has to bind to its substrate for that chemical reaction to occur so that that larger protein can be cut up into those smaller viral proteins. So if we want to block this, one thing that we could do is use our knowledge of transition states. Because now that we know that the substrate has the highest binding affinity for the transition state, which means that it, it wants to grab onto that transition state more than it wants to grab onto the substrate. And if we need that substrate to bind in order for that larger protein to be cut, then one way we might be able to fight HIV is to stop the substrate from binding. So what we can actually do in the laboratory is make an inert transition state that mimics the transition state of the natural reaction. And that way, the enzyme will preferentially bind to our homemade transition state over the substrate such that the substrate can no longer bind because it's already full. It doesn't have room to bind to both the substrate and the transition state. So it binds to our transition state. There's no room for the substrate to come in and that larger protein cannot be cut. And those little proteins don't go out and create mayhem in the body. So by creating this transition state in the lab, we are binding it to the enzyme and effectively blocking this reaction from ever occurring hence inhibiting the enzyme from doing its job. And there are actually medications out there that do this. All right, so let's recap. So again, in the body, you have all these molecules that are constantly undergoing chemical reaction. One of these molecules is a protein. You're already familiar with that. An enzyme is just a type of protein that increases the rate of chemical reaction. And the enzymatic reaction is essentially an enzyme binding to a substrate a chemical reaction occurring, creating the transition state that is not technically the substrate anymore and it's not quite the product yet. A little more chemical reaction occurs, that's turned into the product and then is released 
goes out to do its job. With enzyme inhibition, the example that we talked about is with HIV. Its enzyme is HIV-1 protease, that when HIV creates that long protein and the HIV-1 protease cuts it into smaller viral proteins, releasing it into the body, causing mayhem. So one way to fight HIV is to basically stop that enzyme from doing its job of cutting the larger protein. So how do we do this? Well, we create that inert transition state in the laboratory that will preferentially bind to the HIV-1 protease enzyme, leaving no room for the substrate to come in and bind to it, preventing the chemical reaction, thereby inhibiting the enzyme. And that is a short, simplified version of what happens here. And thankfully, there are numerous medications out there that accomplish this very nicely. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know how you think I did. Now, this is not only my first time learning this material, I mean, we literally just learned this over the past week in biochem, but it is certainly my first time teaching something like this, and these topics are very complex, so it's a challenge for me to not only learn it appropriately, but to figure out how to effectively and articulately communicate it back to you. So it's a work in progress, and we'll get better over time, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.